Hey fans, Anthony from HatchesNet here, and today we are going to talk about Crapopolis and SaberSpark's take on it. For those unfamiliar, Crapopolis is an animated comedy set in ancient Greece. The catch is that the city-state of Crapopolis merges the myth and legends of the era with the new concept of a society. The cartoon airs on Sundays during Fox Animation's Domination programming block. It was created by Dan Harmon, who is best known for a community and Rick and Morty. Within a year of the series' announcement, Crapopolis was portrayed as being the first ever animated series curated entirely on the blockchain. Fox was preparing to sell non-fungible tokens, also known as NFTs, as well as digital assets that tie into the series. There was also various audience participation activities and exclusives planned, but all of the blockchain buzz was quickly dropped. SaberSpark's take was comparable to what he thought about that NFT-based Bored Ape Yacht Club animation and digital assets. I believe that he was being too biased on Crapopolis. Sure, the concept of a television show involving any blockchain mumbo-jumbo gives most people the heebie-jeebies. However, from what I can tell, Crapopolis never executed on that vision. To provide a little bit of insight on the story of Crapopolis as a television series, we begin with King Tyrannus, who is voiced by Richard Aoti. Fans of various UK-based comedies will be familiar with him. Ty, as his family calls him, is a visionary yet pompous ruler. That is the result of his goddess mother, Deliria, placing him onto the throne. Ty is sometimes willing to get his hands dirty to improve society, but he leans heavily on his siblings to execute the plans. Deliria is voiced by Hannah Waddingham, who is at the peak of her popularity. Deliria is an omnipotent being who really could not care less about others, but that just hides the soft interior that she has for her husband and children. Her husband, and Ty's father, Schlub, is a manitar that really only cares about his family and having fun. He provides a nice contrast to the more serious characters around him. Schlub is voiced by another UK comedy import and community alum, Matt Berry. You might know Matt Berry from the community episode about grifting. Ty's half-brother is Hippocampus, Hippo for short. He is a genius half-Atlantean fish man that executes the role of a mad scientist very well. Every idea seems to come too easy to him, but not every idea that he executes turns out as intended. Ty's half-sister is Stupendous, a half-cyclops wall of a woman. She acts as the leader of the city-state's military and the muscle for her family. Every week, the series introduces a problem to be solved that may further society. There is a huge emphasis on May. There is also typically a B-plot focusing on a family member's specific journey. For example, Season 1, Episode 23, Remedial Archaeology. The episode opens in modern times with an unknown cavern being discovered by an archaeologist. She gets trapped and finds a seashell. Unknown to her, that seashell is being sold at a bazaar thousands of years in the past, and Ty happens to be the one that buys it. The premise is that Crapopolis is unknown in modern times. Before he will save the archaeologist by ordering the building of a tunnel, Ty requires that she tell him what he needs to change in the past so that Crapopolis will be known in the future. Ty then proceeds to issue some orders to his siblings that occasionally contradict themselves, convincing them that the king has gone mad. The B-plot is that Schlub has been invited to a monster wedding. He did not invite Deliria because he knows that she does not care for his family and gods typically react negatively to monsters. Feigning to prove Schlub wrong, Deliria invites herself to attend and makes a whole mess of it. With shows like this one, no one should ever expect high art. Heck, the critics seem unenthused. However, Crapopolis is popular enough to receive three seasons, even though it is still in its first. I stopped watching shows like Bob's Burgers and The Great North because I wanted to be removed from the typical animated family's dramedy cycle. Crapopolis easily fills that void with its detached fantasy. I have never had to think too much about it. You know, except to write this article. The point is, Saberspark had some bored ape yacht club glasses on when he spoke about Crapopolis. If you passed on it after seeing Saberspark's video, it deserves another look. As with most new shows, give it a few episodes. If it is still not your cup of tea, then move on. Has Dan Harmon ever steered you wrong?
CyberSpark, if you're watching this, my advice also applies to you. Give it another try. You may not laugh out loud at every joke, but there are things happening in this show that I have never had the privilege to witness. My brain instantly compares it to shows like Rick and Morty and Happy Tree Friends. Tell me in the comments your thoughts in this video. Did you like what you saw and how was your experience with it? Thanks for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.